Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to the next concept for capital structure, we're now going to talk about M&M &M Proposition 2. And we're still dealing with the case where there are no taxes being paid. So to do a little review from previous videos, M&M &M Proposition 1 in the no tax case stated that the value of an unlevered firm is equal to the value of a levered firm. So the firm's value is independent of its capital structure. The capital structure doesn't matter. And the implications of that was that the share price is constant and also the weighted average cost of capital is constant for any firm. And in addition, when we went over financial leverage, we showed that more leverage, more debt increases risk of the equity because the gains and losses are magnified. We showed that with magnifying the return on equity and the earnings per share. So let's take these concepts here and combine them in a diagram where we are going from an unlevered firm to a more levered firm, meaning that we are taking more debt. That's how we increase leverage. Well, no matter how much leverage we have, the share price is always gonna be constant, right? For an unlevered firm and for a levered firm, that was one of the implications of M&M Proposition 1. However, when we dealt with financial leverage, for an unlevered firm, the equity is less risky, and for a levered firm, the equity is more risky. So notice how the price of equity can stay constant, however, its risk can change. So you can think about it sort of like, let's say the equity price is right there, well, if it's less risky, it has a chance of going up here and up here. But if it's more risky, it can go up here. So higher gains, but also higher losses. However, that price is still constant if you want to sort of visually see it. So just because equity is getting more risky, it doesn't mean that the share price is changing. The share price is always constant. So now I'm gonna bring something way out of left field and I'm gonna bring a concept in from the previous course. If you remember in the previous course, there was a chapter that dealt with return versus risk. And what happens when we increase the risk of something? Well, then the return should increase as well. That discount rate should increase. So if we apply that concept here, because the equity is getting more risky with more leverage, that also means that the return on equity is increasing as well. So the return on equity increases with more debt, with more leverage. And that basically is M&M Proposition 2 with the no tax case. So the return or cost of equity, both of those mean the same thing. Sometimes you'll see it labeled as RE. And we've seen this RE in the weighted average cost of capital formula. So the return cost of equity increases with more leverage. That's M&M &M Proposition 2. Now remember, this is still all happening with the share price being constant. Right? Just because that return or cost of equity is increasing, it doesn't mean that the share price is increasing as well. The share price is constant when you're dealing with no taxes. So just keep that in mind. Now there is a way to get a little bit more technical with this. And to do so, we have to go through the weighted average cost of capital formula. So if you remember, weighted average cost of capital is what? It's the weighted average of the return on debt, or the RD, and the return on equity which is what we're dealing with in this video, or this RE here. And sometimes there's preferred equity, but in this case, let's just deal with debt and equity. So then the weighted average cost of capital formula is just the debt over the value of the company times the return on debt, plus the equity over the value of the company times the return on equity. Now, if you remember, return on debt usually has like a one minus T attached to it in the WAC formula. 
but we're not dealing with any taxes in this case, so we can leave that out. Now, if you remember intuitively what this WAC means, this weighted average cost of capital, it's basically the minimum return that our assets have to produce in order for us to profit. Because this weighted average cost of capital is what capital is costing the firm on average. So the firm has to make higher than that in order to make a profit. So sometimes you'll see this whack, especially in this chapter, you'll see this weighted average cost of capital being referred to as return on assets. So instead of weighted average cost of capital, sometimes you'll see this RA here, but they both mean the same thing. So what you can actually do is you can rearrange this formula and you can isolate for this return on equity here. All right, and instead of writing weighted average cost of capital, we're now gonna write this return on assets, this RA here. So I'm not gonna go through the algebra of how to isolate for this return on equity because you don't need to know it, but you do need to know the final result. So the return on equity, when you isolate for everything, it's gonna be the return on assets, right, or the weighted average cost of capital, plus, the return on assets minus the return on debt. And this is gonna be multiplied by debt over equity. And this here is a representation of the return on equity in more technical terms. So the return on assets or the weighted average cost of capital plus in brackets, the weighted average cost of capital or the return on assets minus the return on debt times debt over equity. Now, if you remember from m and Proposition 1, one of the implications was that the weighted average cost of capital is constant. So that means this RA is constant. Right, so this is constant as well. And also, this return on debt is constant. That's not changing if we take on more or less leverage. That return on debt is always going to be the same. So that is constant as well. So notice how this return on equity is basically a function of the debt to equity ratio. So as we take on more debt to equity, or as the debt to equity ratio increases by taking on more debt, that return on equity is going to increase. And that's what we stated here, just in words. So this is m and proposition two in the no tax case with words. And then this here is m and proposition two with a formula showing it technically. The return on equity is increasing as you take on more leverage. And that is it for m and Proposition 2 with the no tax case. Basically two different ways to show it with words or with a formula technically. Now in the next video what I'm going to do is I'm going to take m and Proposition 1 and m and Proposition 2 and I'm going to summarize it together with the propositions and their implications and I'm also going to show them together on two separate graphs. So I'm going to show them visually and that's going to be super useful when you are doing future questions that are related to this stuff. So you can go ahead and watch that video. Make sure you do.